Good morning students. Let's discuss about the anatomy of middle ear today. So middle ear cavity is also known as the tympanic cavity or tympanum. It is a narrow air filled space. It is located into the petrous part of the temporal bone. इसे प्रीवियस लेक्चर में मैंने आपको शो किया था टेम्पोरल बोन एंड वो स्कल में कहाँ लोकेटेड है डिफरेंट पार्ट्स होते हैं टेम्पोरल बोन के पीट्रिस पार्ट इज़ वन ऑफ द पोर्शन ऑफ द टेम्पोरल बोन इट इज़ अ हार्ड डेंस पोर्शन लोकेटेड ऑन द इन साइड इन द स्कल बोन एंड इन दैट पीट्रिस पार्ट the tympanic cavity is located this cavity is located between the external ear and the internal ear and that is why it is named as the middle ear in this figure you can see this is the interior of the skull bone these are the different fossas the anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa This portion highlighted with the red color here is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. This portion is known as the petrous portion of the temporal bone. You can see here this is the uh, middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity and it is located in between the external ear and the inner ear. so basically it uh, it is related laterally with the tympanic membrane and medially with the inner ear shape ki agar baat kare to it is shaped as a cube the vertical and the anterior posterior diameters are same that is 15 mm coronal section mein agar is cavity ko view kiya jaye to it appears to be a biconcave in shape you can see here in the figure this is the medial wall and this is the lateral wall and uh, this is inner ear this is the cochlea of the inner ear this is tympanic membrane so these are the medial and the lateral wall and these walls are closest at the center medial and lateral walls are closest at, at the center that because of which the anterior wall becomes narrow and the distances separating the roof center and the floor are 6 mm 2 mm and 4 mm respectively parts of the tympanic cavity tympanic cavity ko do parts mein divide kiya hai tympanic cavity proper and the epitympanic recess in the figure here you can see this is the tympanic membrane the portion of tympanic cavity just opposite to the tympanic membrane is known as tympanic cavity proper so this is where the tympanic membrane starts and this is where it ends so this entire portion is the tympanic cavity proper and the portion above the level of tympanic membrane that is this portion highlighted in the green is the epitympanic recess this is known as epitympanic recess in this figure also you can see the same this is the tympanic membrane portion above the level of tympanic membrane is the epitympanic recess and the portion from here to here is the tympanic cavity proper this portion is the tympanic cavity proper communications of the tympanic cavity tympanic cavity is communicated anteriorly with the nasopharynx in this figure you can see the different portions of the pharynx portion which we are concerned with is the nasopharynx so the nasal cavity extends posteriorly and continues as the nasopharynx so is part se tympanic cavity related hai anteriorly and it is related with this part with the help of the auditory tube or the eustachian tube or the pharyngotympanic tube 
in this figure this is a coronal section and you can see here um this is the lateral wall of the middle ear this is the medial wall of the middle ear on back side posterior wall this is the floor this is the roof and in front there would be the anterior wall and from that wall this is the auditory tube jo ki connect karti hai is cavity ko with the nasopharynx posteriorly the uh, middle ear cavity is connected to the mastoid antrum and mastoid air cells with the help of adductors to mastoid antrum in this figure also you can see tympanic membrane so this is the lateral wall this is the medial wall this is the floor this is the roof anterior wall is not shown here and this on back side is the posterior wall and on the posterior wall you can see this opening एडिटर्स बेसिकली एडिटर्स का मीनिंग होता है एन ओपनिंग और एन एंट्रेंस दैट लीड्स इन टू अ कैविटी सो दिस इज द एडिटर्स एट एंट्रम और द एडिटर्स ऑफ द मेस्ट्रॉइड एंट्रम एंड दिस कम्युनिकेट्स द मिडिल ईयर कैविटी विद द मेस्ट्रॉइड एंट्रम एंड द मेस्ट्रॉइड एयर सेल्स so what is mastoid antrum these are small circular air filled spaces and they are situated in the posterior part of the petrous temporal bone mastoid air cells are also a series of intercommunicating spaces variable in size they are present within the mastoid process in this figure just behind the ear this bony prominence is referred to as the mastoid process and inside this process there are various intercommunicating spaces that are referred to as the mastoid air cells in this figure you can see this is the mastoid antrum the cavity the circular cavity and in the mastoid process these are the various intercommunicating small spaces which are referred to as the mastoid air cells this is the mastoid process this entire pink portion is the temporal bone this is the external acoustic meatus and this is the mastoid process inside which the mastoid air cells are located कंटेंट्स की अगर हम बात करें मिडिल ईयर की तो मिडिल ईयर में ऑसिकल्स हैं ईयर ऑसिकल्स स्मॉल बोन्स विच आर मेलियस इनकस एंड स्टेपीज उनके जॉइंट्स लोकेटेड हैं उनके लिगामेंट्स लोकेटेड हैं मसल्स हैं टेंसर टिम्पेनाई एंड स्टेपीडियस नर्व्स लोकेटेड हैं कॉडा टिम्पेनाई नर्व टिम्पेनिक प्लेक्सिस लोकेटेड हैं एयर इट इज़ अ एयर फिल्ड कैविटी सो एयर इज प्रेजेंट then uh, vessels supplying and draining the middle ear are also present inside the cavity so these are the contents of the middle ear cavity then we'll discuss about the boundaries of the middle ear cavity in order to discuss the boundaries we will take help of a cube because humne bola hai ki middle ear cavity is shaped as a cube so we'll also take help of the cube to describe the various walls of the middle ear cavity and the important structures present on on those walls so in this figure here this is the floor of the middle ear cavity this is the roof of the middle ear cavity and we are viewing this cavity from the lateral side so this is the lateral wall this is the medial wall this is the anterior wall and this is the posterior wall one by one we will discuss these walls in detail and the structures related with these walls so the first is the roof of the middle ear cavity it is also known as the tegmental wall kyu bolte hain isko tegmental wall because it is formed by a thin plate of bone which is known as tegment tympani tegment tympani is um it it is a part of the petrous portion of the temporal bone 
एंड ये जो टेगमेंट टिम्पन आई है इट द सेम प्लेट इज प्रोलॉन्ग बैकवर्ड्स और ये फॉर्म करेगी रूफ फॉर द कैनाल ऑफ टेंसर टिम्पनाई मसल इन दिस फिगर यू कैन सी दिस इज द मिडल ईयर कैविटी एंड दिस इज द रूफ एंड दिस प्लेट ऑफ बोन इज नोन एज इट इज नेम्ड एज द टेगमेंट टिम्पेनाई एंड दैट इज वाई रूफ इज नोन एज टेगमेंटल वॉल then the floor floor is also known as the jugular wall why it is known as jugular wall because this floor separates the middle ear cavity from the superior bulb of internal jugular vein jaise roof thin plate of bone se banta hai even the floor is formed by a thin plate of bone which is also part of the temporal bone and in the floor near the medial wall there is a canal which is known as tympanic canaliculus why it is known as tympanic canaliculus because is canal ke through glossopharyngeal jo nerve hai uski tympanic branch jo hai wo uh, enter hoti hai and it reaches the medial wall of the middle ear so with the help of this figure this is the floor and it is made up of a thin plate of bone and it separates the middle ear cavity from the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein and on the side of the medial wall it presents a canal through which the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve reaches the medial wall and it helps in the formation of the tympanic plexus in this figure here you can see this is the floor which is formed by a thin plate of bone part of the temporal bone and it separates the middle ear cavity from this superior bulb of the internal jugular vein in this figure also this is a cube and this is the floor and it is separating the or uh, the thin plate is separating the cavity from the jugular vein the internal jugular vein and on the medial side it presents with a canal through which the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal reaches the medial wall the next wall is the anterior wall it is known as the carotid wall so there are three uh, structures present on this wall mainly that is from above downwards so the uppermost part of the wall consists of the bony it it consists of a opening of the bony canal through which the tensor tympani muscle it it passes middle part has opening for the auditory tube and the inferior part is formed by a thin plate of bone which forms the posterior wall of the carotid canal carotid canal jo hai wo basically ek envelope hai jo ki surround karta hai internal carotid artery ko to give it protection to uski jo posterior wall hai it is a bony canal to uski jo posterior wall hai that is formed by thin plate of bone which is part of the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity and this wall separates this part this inferior part of the anterior wall separates the middle ear from the internal carotid artery this plate is also perforated by the superior and inferior sympathetic keratico tympanic nerves and tympanic branch of the carotid artery in this figure uh, this is the part of the cube that is showing the anterior or the carotid wall and ऊपर से नीचे आते हैं हम तो दिस इज़ द कैनाल फॉर द टेंसर टेम्पेनाई मसल दिस इज़ द टेंसर टेम्पेनाई मसल दिस इज़ द ओपनिंग फॉर द ऑरिट्री ट्यूब एंड दिस दिस इन्फीरियर पोर्शन दिस प्लेट ऑफ बोन विल फॉर्म द पोस्टीरियर वॉल ऑफ द कैरोटेड कैनाल थ्रू विच द इंटरनल कैरोटेड आर्ट्री पासिस सो इट सेपरेट्स द मिडल ईयर कैविटी फ्राम द इंटरनल कैरोटेड आर्ट्री and also there are certain nerves and tympanic branch of the internal carotid artery that pierces this inter uh, this anterior wall in this figure also you can see 
this is the interior wall one opening is for the tensor tympani another opening is for the auditory tube then this thin part is forming the posterior wall of the carotid canal through which the internal carotid will pass and this uh, is also perforated by certain branches arterial as well as branches of the nerves pierces this thin plate and there is one more structure you can see in between the tensor tympani canal for tensor tympani and the canal for the auditory tube or the openings you can see a bony septum in between and this bony septum it goes on to the medial wall and forms a curved lamina and it is known as the processus cochlearyformis so what is processus cochlearyformis it is a bony septum present in between the canal for tensor tympani and the auditory tube it is continued posteriorly on the medial wall as a curved lamina which is known as the processus cochlearyformis in this figure you can see here this portion is the anterior wall this is the anterior wall this is the auditory tube this is the tensor tympani so this is the canal bony canal for the tensor tympani and this is the canal for the uh, auditory tube in between the tensor tympani and the auditory tube there is a bony septum and it forms a curved lamina on the medial wall which is known as processus cochlearyformis in this figure also this is the the bone uh, this is the uh, basically uh, the tensor tympani the opening of the tensor tympani and this is the auditory tube uh, and uh, in this figure you can see um, the the septum is not shown here but uh, basically uh, this tensor tympani will go and it will uh, the tendon will insert into the uh uh it turns and uh, laterally it it has to reach the upper half of the handle of the malleus and it gets inserted there so uh posterior end of the processus cochlearyformis forms a pulley around which the tendon of tensor tympani turns laterally to reach the upper part of the handle of malleus and this could be seen here these are the two openings in between there is bony septum and around which the tendon of tensor tympani turns and it reaches laterally to get inserted into the handle the upper part of the handle of the malleus now the posterior or the mastoid wall so the posterior or the mastoid wall also has four important features फर्स्ट इज दी एडिटर्स जो हम ऑलरेडी देख चुके हैं उससे नीचे मतलब हम आ रहे हैं अब अब डाउनवर्ड्स नेक्स्ट इज दी फोसा इनक्यूडिस जो इनकस का शॉर्ट प्रोसेस है इट कॉजेज अ डिप्रेशन ऑन दी पोस्टीरियर वॉल दैट इज रेफर टू एज दी फोसा इनक्यूडिस देन देर इज अ पिरामिड वो पिरामिड एक बेसिकली कोनिकल प्रोजेक्शन है एट दी जंक्शन ऑफ दी पोस्टीरियर एंड दी मीडियल वॉल एंड through the apex of that conical projection there is passage of tendon of stapedius muscle in this figure this back portion is the posterior or the mastoid wall and this is the um, adductus to the antrum so this is the first feature of the posterior wall then we'll come down this portion this is the fossa incudis this is the incus this is the short process of incus and it causes a depression here which is fossa incudis uh, then come down on the posterior on the a uh, junction of the posterior wall and the medial wall there is a conical projection jiske apex se this tendon of the stapedius passes and coming to the lateral side lateral to this pyramid there is a canal which is known as posterior canaliculus 
through which the corda tympani nerve enters into the middle ear cavity. This is the corda tympani nerve, which is branch of the facial nerve, and it enters into the middle ear cavity through this posterior canaliculus present on the posterior wall towards the lateral side. So the fourth feature is the posterior canaliculus. It is lateral to the pyramid and near posterior edge of the tympanic membrane. The corda tympani nerve enters the middle ear cavity. In this figure, you can see here, uh, you can see the anterior wall with the openings, tensor tympani and pharyngotympanic tube. Then you can see the, this is the internal carotid and this part will form the posterior wall of the carotid canal. The nerves and the arterial branches entering through it. And this is the posterior wall. This is the editus to the mastoid antrum. Fossa incutus is not shown here. This is the that conical projection pyramid, and this is the corda tympani nerve. The corda tympani is actually this. This is not corda tympani. This is incorrect. This is not corda tympani. The corda tympani nerve is on the posterior. It takes entry from the posterior wall. Next wall is the lateral or the membranous wall. Why it is known as membranous? Because it is related to the tympanic membrane. Separates the middle ear from the external acoustic meatus. Formation kaise hoda lateral wall ka? Maximum portion is ka. Mainly it is formed by the tympanic membrane and the tympanic ring and sulcus. Why sulcus just my tympanic membrane lodge hoti hai. Usse ye form hota hai. Jahaan pe uh, epitympanic recess mein, jaha tympanic membrane nahi hai, waha pe it is formed by the squamous temporal bone, which is part of the temporal bone only, squamous, part of the temporal bone. So, in this figure here, this is the lateral wall, this is the, this entire is the lateral wall and uh, this is, this portion is formed by the tympanic membrane and the portion above the tympanic membrane in the epitympanic recess, the lateral wall is formed by the squamous temporal bone. So, in the lateral wall near the tympanic notch, we have two small apertures, two small openings are present. One is referred to as the petrotympanic fissure and other is referred to as the anterior canaliculus. Petrotympanic fissure is a, is a fissure, it's an opening, small opening, which is present in front of the upper end of the bony rim. It lodges the anterior process of the malleus. And it also tra transmits the tympanic branch of the maxillary artery. The anterior canaliculus is basically a canal which, through which the corda tympani nerve, it, it just leaves the middle ear and emerge at the base of the skull. So in this figure you can see here, uh, this portion, this is the anterior canaliculus, the corda tympani is leaving the uh, middle ear and it is present towards the uh, lateral wall. And it is just above, this is, this is the bony rim. And this figure as well, uh, somewhere here, we have the petrotympanic fissure and this anterior process is lodged into this petrotympanic fissure and here you have the anterior canaliculus through which the corda tympani will leave the middle ear cavity. So it enters from the posterior canaliculus and it leaves through the anterior canaliculus. Last would be the medial or the labyrinthine wall. Why it is known as the labyrinthine wall? Because um, uh, it is related, it is on the side of the inner ear. This is the medial wall and this is the inner ear. And labyrinth means network. So if you look at the inner ear, it is, uh, it is a network of different structures like uh, this, these are the semicircular canals. This portion is referred to as the vestibule. 
and this portion is referred to as the cochlea this this coil shaped structure is the cochlea so because of this uh, labyrinth it is referred to as the labyrinthine wall and this wall separates the middle ear from the inner ear medial wall also has some important structures like it has the promontory which is a bulge rounded bulge produced by the first turn of the cochlea it is grooved by tympanic plexus in this figure this is the medial wall and you can see here this is that first rounded bulge it is produced by the first turn of the cochlea और बहुत सारे नर्व्स यहाँ पे आके इकट्ठा हो जाते हैं एंड टिम्पैनिक प्लेक्सिस बनाते हैं सो इट दिस प्लेक्सिस विल ग्रूव दी प्रोमोन्ट्री दिस फिगर यू कैन सी हियर दिस पोर्शन इज द प्रोमोन्ट्री एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट टर्न ऑफ द कॉकलिया दिस दिस इज दिस कुड बी रेफर टू एज द फर्स्ट टर्न ऑफ द कॉकलिया and this is promontory now another structure fenestra vestibuli it is also known as oval window and it is a opening that lies posterior superior to the promontory what is fenestra basically fenestra is a uh, it's a small opening in a bone and why it is known as vestibuli because it lies opposite to the vestibule of the middle uh, of the inner ear and it leads into that vestibule in this figure you can see here posterior superior to this promontory there is a oval window an opening that leads into the vestibule and this window is closed by the foot plate of the stapes in this figure also you can see here this is posterior superiorly there is a oval window leading into the vestibule of the inner ear and it is closed by the foot plate of the stapes this is known as fenestra vestibuli same type of window would be present in the posterior inferior portion which is a round window which is known as fenestra cochlei and that is closed by a secondary tympanic membrane and why it is known as cochlei because wo lie karti hai opposite to the scala tympani of the cochlea in this figure you can see here promontory a uh, promontory say uh, inferiorly there is this round window closed by the secondary tympanic membrane and it is known as fenestra cochlei because it lies opposite to the scala tympani this outer portion of the cochlea is the scala tympani so two important prominences are also present in the medial wall that is a prominence of facial canal and the prominence of lateral semicircular canal these are two bony canals through the facial canal you have the facial nerve so and through the lateral semicircular canal you have the lateral semicircular canal of the inner ear so in this figure uh backwards and above the fenestra vestibuli this is fenestra vestibuli backwards and above to this there is a bony prominence which is a canal for the facial nerve this is the facial nerve through this canal facial nerve is passing so the prominence is seen on the medial wall and it is known as the prominence for the facial canal and above this prominence of facial canal you can see another prominence which is prominence for the lateral semicircular canal in this figure here you can see these are the semicircular canals of the inner ear this is the lateral semicircular canal so uh, with this we have uh, covered uh, around half the portion of the middle ear the remaining uh, portion would be discussed in another lecture thank you so much